we do have a good question up next from Brian. Hey! Another Brian. Why or I? Um, I. Hey. Same spelling as our Brian. But it's not Bizarro Brian. Not Bizarro okay, Brian. Okay, it's just another This Brian. is Brian S. Brian S. He says, Hi, Money Guy Show. I'm 35 years old, and my finances are extremely overweight in rental real estate okay. in comparison to my liquid cash and index funds. What would be a good path to balance out my investment strategy? Should I sell something? What do you think? Well, it's really difficult to assess that uh, based on not having any knowledge, right? Let's suppose that all these rental properties you bought were really, really good properties and you bought them in really good locations and you're gonna have a really high likelihood of having good tenants. And maybe if you have them levered, you have really low interest rates that you can't go back in time and get. Just because you have perhaps made less than ideal decisions along the way, or perhaps you got some of the steps of the financial order of operations out of order, doesn't mean that you have to apple cart change everything. Here's what it does mean. Uh, you need to recognize at 35 years old, if you have all of your money in rental real estate, and you have it in a bunch of illiquid assets, you have more risk inherent in your situation than someone else who would follow the financial order of operations and had done it differently. So there are some considerations that you need to make around like, okay, what's my cash reserve? What's my emergency fund at right now? What should it actually be at? Because what if we do see a downturn? And what happens if I have some vacancies? And what happens if I have to do repairs? Am I covered in those areas? And if the answer is no, I think you need to start doing everything in your power to begin shoring that kind of stuff up. Well, if you find yourself in a situation where, well, that's impossible. The only way that everything continues moving along is if everything happens absolutely perfectly, I would think, okay, well, maybe you do need to perhaps unload one of those pieces of property or perhaps think about how you could de-risk your situation what you have to do is, and you think about this like a ship moving in a direction, ships don't often turn 180 degrees rapidly. You turn slow angles at a time to get going back on the right course. I think, Brian, that's probably what you have to do in your financial situation. What's great is that you've recognized it before the you-know-what hits the you-know-what. I mean, there are a bunch of folks out there who, you know, in their 20s and 30s, they did real estate and they had all the success. They did great. And then the music stopped and it turned and it floored them. It took them out. How wonderful that you're recognizing before that happens. Okay, maybe there are some things I need to do to try to write this ship. We just did some social media. We said, I'm a financial advisor. Uh huh. And ask me anything, ask us any question, but we're always going to say, it depends. Yep. And this is, this is why I think our content is so unique versus some other content creators. We won't name any names, but they, they love to just off the cuff give you a snap judgment, go sell half yes. that property, yep. get out of debt and do all this and so forth else. But the reality of the situation is we got to triage you. Mm -hmm. got to take you as you come into us. You tell us your, your situation and your data points. And then I don't, I don't yell at you for what you did in the past because more there's, there's a chance that, you know, because sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Mm -hmm. I will straight up tell you, yep. I've got clients that bought rental real estate in the 2000, 2010, which are steals of a lifetime. Right place, right time. And just because now when we look at their portfolio and we see they're over-concentrated, I'm like, hey, you you, you got, you know, there, there's a, this thing called luck that works out pretty nicely. I can tell you the proper way, but there are some times where it's, you just, you stuck the landing on something and I'm not going to tell you to throw something out the door if it's good without looking at your sit true situation. I triage you as you come in. This is why financial planners, I think, have unique perspectives because we take all of your data points and try to figure out, hey, how does what's your next path with your next dollar that's the most well uh, properly allocated? And that's why I like, instead of trying to tell you to go sell something I would actually have you f try to figure out how far off course are you? Uh -huh. Because I would risk assess this thing. Um, because if, is it one of those things where if all of a sudden the market did have a lot of volatility and people weren't paying their rents on these rental real estate and that you started losing assets or, you know, then let's bolster that cash reserves as ASAP so that we can take that risk off the table. And that's why the financial order of operations, this thing is bulletproof in a lot of ways is because when it comes to your next dollar, it lets you now look at your financial life and say, hey, where am I at on 
you know, having debt taken care of. Where am I at with my emergency reserves? Where am I at now on the wealth building side of the equation with Roth assets and maxing out retirement? So it goes through all the things that a financial planner would do kind of in a triage type standpoint. Mm-hmm. Where are your risk? Because that's what you need to be looking at is that if you, because I love that you might have a bunch of real estate, that this could all work out beautifully. And maybe all you have to do is we need to spend a little more time getting your emergency reserves mm-hmm. caught up. And then once those emergency reserves are caught up, we can move on to step five and then make sure you're loading up index funds mm-hmm. inside of your Roth a, uh, you know, IRA. This is why this all plays out beautifully, but I'm not going to give you a knee-jerk reaction and just go tell you to go sell something without understanding really what are your goals, what are your risks, and where are you trying to go? And I think that's why the financial order of operations is one of the more superior systems out mm-hmm. there is because it takes you where you are and helps you course correct exactly what Bo talked about on you're on that ship of life and you're navigating these seas that are going to bring all kind of obstacles, all kind of mistakes you'll make, but that's okay. You don't have to be perfect to be successful mm-hmm. in the financial world. You just have to do it well enough that you don't get caught skinny dipping and swimming naked when the tide goes out. And that's what we're going to try to do by protecting you with the the, the financial order of operations.